Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. Today, I am so excited to pick back up where we left off with Julie and Julia. In case you didn't see it, there's a part one to this where we talk all about... We're, we're going through the behind the scenes of it all. We're talking about scene by scene of this movie and breaking down all the information I could find out and share my obsession with Julia Child and Amy Adams and everybody else involved. So let's get back into this and pick up with part two. Now, in case you forgot... Part one, we left off with Julie and her husband, Eric. They had, she'd had a rough day at work. She came home, she fixed a nice meal and talks about how one of her friends started this blog and she's realizing, well, I could blog. What should I blog about? And he loves her cooking. So he suggests that she blog about cooking, which leads into talking about her love of Julia Child and Hey, maybe I could cook through her cookbook. So let's pick up where we left off. So here we are. They just had the world's best looking bruschetta. I'm obsessed with that bruschetta. She tells him that Annabelle, her friend, is doing a blog. And Annabelle is stupid and vapid, so I should do a blog. Which is a really funny reason to start one up. But she loves to cook. It's her escape from her shitty job. So he helps her come up with this idea. Hey, you should write about that. You're really good at it. You enjoy it. Just do it. She talks about Julia Child. She's like, hey, I could cook my way through Julia Child's cookbook. She stole a copy from her mom, so she's got one, and they come up with this plan. She says she has ADD, but a deadline for her would be good, so she gives herself a year, and she's nervous about it. She's like, you know, I had this full-time job. How am I going to do this? But she sets up this blog called Julie Julia Project, the, uh, and it's about mastering the art of French cooking. And so 365 days, 524 recipes. She writes that she's risking her marriage, her job, her cat's well-being, and she has taken on this quote-unquote deranged assignment. So, as you know, I love the behind the scenes of it all. So let's talk behind the scenes. Here's the real Julie Powell and her husband, Eric. So she was working for Lower Manhattan Development Corporation in August 2002. That's when she started the Julie slash Julia project, a blog chronicling her attempt to cook all the recipe in Julia Child's Mastering the Art of French Cooking. So the blog quickly gained a large following and Powell signed a book deal with Little Brown and Company. The resulting book, Julie and Julia, 365 Days, 524 Recipes, One Tiny Apartment Kitchen, was published in 2005. The paperback edition was retitled Julie and Julia, My Year of Cooking Dangerously. So we'll talk about Julia Child's reaction to it all because we will get into that in a later part when it makes more sense. But uh, know that Julia Child saw this and, and, and I will talk about it. Okay, so reviews at first were kind of mixed. Um, it's kind of, they... Mm, it's hard. It's hard. I kind of got the, nobody ever came out and said it, but because of Julia's reaction to it all, people were afraid, kind of like Devil Wears Prada. Not that I'm comparing Julia Child to Anna Wintour, but uh, where Anna wasn't happy about it, people were afraid to say that they enjoyed it. Kind of got the same vibe going on here. But okay, we'll get into that. I don't want to jump ahead just interesting to know the behind the scenes of it all. I love that kind of stuff. The book itself is 400 pages. It has over a thousand four-star reviews on Amazon. People are calling it laugh out loud funny. I don't know why I haven't read this book yet. You know, I just realizing to myself and you can hear me talk to myself. Hey, I should read this book. Elizabeth Gilbert, author of Eat, Pray, Love, calls it a feast, a voyage and a marvel. So yeah, I should totally read this book. I didn't think about this till just now. But um, it's like I say, it's got pretty good reviews. Some people do think that they... Some people are saying that the movie was better than the book, but I don't know. It's hard to... I don't, I don't want to talk crap about the author because it's her story too. So yeah, I like, I like both sides of the movie, so I'm sure I would like both sides of the book, learning about the author and knowing about Julia Child. Okay, let's go back over to Julia Child. Julia's at the market saying bonjour to everybody. Um, Paul, okay, so often in this movie, they 
are explaining what's happening through a series of letters. Paul, her husband, is writing letters to his brother. And Julia often writes a letter to her very close friend, Avis, a pen pal she's had for a lot of years. We'll find out more about her later. But um, what's striking to me is the love story between Julia and Paul. Now, when researching behind the scenes of this, that came up quite a bit. Even Nora Ephron talks about when she was, you know, researching and trying to work on the screenplay for this, something that struck her was the intense love between Julie or Julia, sorry, and Paul. They would even write openly about their very active, healthy sexual sex life with their the you know, the his brother and her friend. They would talk openly about it and they allude to it quite a bit in this movie that they're very physical with each other and they enjoyed that aspect of their relationship. So, hey, good for them. <laughs> um, okay, so they're eating at this fabulous-looking restaurant, and she's just loving the French food. We see her smoking and enjoying, and um, she's, they, they're they often talking about how much they love each other. She says, I love you so much that I'll let you take the first bite. Oh, the other thing, she got married at almost 40 years old, and turns out she was a virgin when she married Paul. So, hey, enjoy that. Um, <laughs> no wonder they were so active, right? Okay, so he works for the government. Now, let me tell you about her. She did work for the government. However, she really wanted to be in the military. When I did research about that, she wanted to join the military. That was her dream. But she was 6'2", and the military told her, you are just too tall. So they turned her away. So she ended up working alongside the military, and we'll get into that because that kind of comes up. But um, she, or more alongside the government, I should say, she works for the government and always dreamt of going into the military. I just found that so fascinating. Again, I'm six feet tall. I find tall facts very interesting. I think that's, I mean, it's just cool. But, uh, you know, all paths lead a certain way because she ended up um, doing all the wonderful cooking. So while they're in Paris, she is, she's not working and she's trying to figure out what she should do with her time. Well, he is encouraging her and asking her, what would you like to do with your time? She said she really wants to eat. And I love that answer so much. But she says that she might try taking hat making lessons. So we see her doing hat making. Doesn't really go so well. Then we see another conversation between her and Paul saying, I'm thinking of taking bridge lessons. I really do like bridge. Well, let me tell you a cool behind the scenes Easter egg of this scene where she's learning how to play bridge. Okay, see that lady standing up toward the back of the room? She is the bridge teacher. Well, her real name is Julia. I'm never going to say this French last name right. It's like Prudhomme, maybe? Um, she is Julia Child's grandniece. And so she got this small part in this movie, and I think it's so cool and such a fun fact to know. She's actually been in a bunch of other things, and if you've watched Dirty John, the Betty Broderick story at all, she played Kate Blake in that, but that is Julia's great niece. I'm interrupting for two seconds to let you now know I am now on ko-fi-coffee.com backslash Real Housewives Recaps. I'm collecting toward a new microphone and sound system. I never remember what all that crap is called, but I priced it out. I'm trying to collect toward that. If that's something you're interested in giving toward, that's where you can do it. I really appreciate all those who have donated. I'm blown away by your generosity. And I just, I really want to grow this channel. I want to sound better. I want to be pr more professional with my equipment. And this is the way to help me do that. So check it out, ko-fi.com backslash Real Housewives Recaps. So from here, Julia is continuing to practice her French lessons. She's still looking for a purpose. She's looking for a French cookbook in English, and it just doesn't seem to be able to be something that she can find anywhere. She references the joy of cooking, which will come up later, but it's not what she's looking for. It's not the French of it all and her love of French food, and she's trying to get it um, to America. So Julia is at her birthday dinner. Paul gives her a gift. This book I will never be able to pronounce is <laughs> La Rose Gastronique, I believe. She says it's absolutely fantastic, but again, it's in French. He says, happy birthday. She and Paul lay in bed and try to read the French book together. 
They're very kissy, very happy. Again, that um, is a nod from Nora Ephron to the physical nature of their relationship. Then we go to Julie. It's day one of her cooking blog slash project. She is working on artichokes with whipped butter. Is there anything better than butter? She says, if you taste something so good, you're going to ask, what is it? And the answer is always butter. You can never have too much butter. So this is again a nod to Julia. Julia always said the same thing about the butter. She loved butter. She said that that was her favorite food. And Julie says that if uh, like a meteor was headed for Earth and they only had 30 days, she would just eat butter. So they continue on showing the days passing. By day 11, she's had a horrible day at work. So she's making chicken with cream and a mushrooms and port. So we learned the very important lesson, don't crowd the mushrooms. Otherwise, they won't brown. So again, we hear about don't crowd the mushrooms. Day 22, she's carried away at Dean and DeLuca. She gets a huge bunch of branches. She has trouble getting them home. We see her being that annoying one on the subway, bringing the huge branches, hitting people with them along the way. Her mom ends up calling and asking her over and over, why are you doing this? You're putting too much pressure on yourself. You already have a job and a husband and you don't need to be doing this too. And Julie's trying to explain it. I have to do something that will give me focus one day at a time and refers to, you know, like an AA situation. And her mom now thinks she's an alcoholic. Um, Not very supportive of all. Okay. So let's go. So Julie has this weird thing about eggs. Okay. So she's never had an egg on its own. She eats things like cake that have eggs in it, but she's never had an individual egg and she's freaked out by it. So she, for the first time, is poaching an egg and this is a really big deal. She ends up loving it. She thought it was going to be all slimy, but it was delicious. She said that it was like, I think she called it, it tastes almost like a cheese sauce rather than this greasy, slimy thing that she thought it would be. I personally love poached eggs, so I'm all for it. I'm not a big egg person, but if I'm going to eat one, I'm going to eat it poached. I think it's delicious, especially on some sort of bread product. She really had a lot of trouble with the poaching of the egg, and I'll tell you my secret that I'm sure is not a secret. A lot of you probably know. If you're having trouble poaching an egg, pour a little bit of vinegar in the water when it's boiling. Something about that keeps the egg together much easier to scoop out when it's time to pull it out. There you go. You're welcome. See? I'm an educational channel as well. (laughs) Okay, so five weeks down, and is anybody reading this? I'm just not sure if someone is. She gets one comment. Who's it from? Her mom, saying, I don't understand why you're doing this. Go back to Julia. Today, they're learning to boil eggs. So she has signed up for this cooking class, and she realizes, no, 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 this is not what I wanted. There are two other women in the class. They're very much talking down to the women. She's just at a different level than this. She enjoys cooking so much. She talks to Madame Brassard. So this becomes our nemesis at the school. She runs the school and she really does not like Julia for some reason. She just doesn't, she doesn't think she belongs there. Um, Julia in real life ends up being the first woman to graduate from her class. She's the only woman in the class. She graduated from Le Cordon Bleu and It just wasn't a thing at the time. Women just didn't do this sort of thing, take professional cooking classes. She talks her way into being able to take this class and struggles off the bat. She can't keep up. She's not used to doing the chopping techniques and stuff, but she pushes herself so hard that she ends up blowing everybody else out of the water. We see her at home chopping these onions, just piles and piles of onions to the point where Paul can't even walk in the door because his eyes are watering so bad. But she says that they don't take me seriously at school. They think that I'm just a frivolous housewife looking for a way to kill time. So instead, she decides she's going to work super hard and be the best at it. And she was. So in class, we see that her hard work is paying off. She's the first to finish chopping onions. She is making this beautiful omelet. In fact, during then that Madame Broussard comes in to complain about Julia being in the class But she overhears the professor telling her what a great job she's doing and ends up leaving without saying anything. We see through, or we hear through a letter she's written to her sister that she couldn't be happier about Le Cordon Bleu. She's learning so much. She's making so many things. 
that she's becoming fearless with things like spearing lobsters. Let me tell you about this. Okay. So this lobster scene, this of course comes up on Julie's side too. Behind the scenes fact is to comply with animal standards uh, with the movies, none of the lobsters were real. The only lobsters that were actually real in the movie are the ones we see in the tank when Julie's trying to pick out a lobster. But none of the lobsters they're using were real lobsters. So that's interesting to know. Okay, so we hear her schedule. Morning class ends. She goes home to make lunch for Paul. He takes a nap, aka they do their thing. And then he goes back to the embassy and she goes back to school for evening classes. Her father is absolutely mortified that she's going to cooking school. Uh, she talks about having, uh, most women like to shop for clothing, but she finds shopping for food much more fun and alludes to, well, it's hard to find a dress here anyway. And I'm like, girl, I fe feel ya. <laughs> They're finally coming around and realizing women are super tall sometimes. So it's becoming more of a thing, but it was always hard growing up before there was Amazon finding really tall things. Uh, her friend is Avis, so we'll find out more about Avis, but she starts to talk about Avis some more, and here we come, one of my favorite scenes of the movie. It's their Valentine's party. They're telling the story of how they met. The guests rave over the food. The They talk about that Madame Broussard, the one that runs Cordon Bleu, hating her. She said it's the only woman, or the only person that she actually hates, <laughs> um, and nobody can believe that anyone could hate Julia. And, okay, so let's talk about this scene for a few minutes because something really interesting is going on here. Okay, during this dinner, one of the guests asks jokingly if Julia and Paul were spies. They laugh it off and they make a joke, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Well, this film was put out in 2009. And about the time that their files of their government work became unclassified. And guess what? They were spies. So it turns out she was top secret research researcher for the OSS. The OSS is Office of Strategic Services. It's a precursor to the CIA. And she was among 4,500 women who served for the OSS. She was a senior typist with the research unit of the Office of War Information. And so, and then she ended up getting promoted to junior research assistant with the secret intelligence branch. So it's so interesting. It's fascinating. And the movie kind of learned of this and wanted to give a nod to that without giving anything away. So they just kind of jokingly ask, are you spies? And they just kind of laugh it off. She talks about being a file clerk instead and kind of diverts attention away from that. Okay, but then the friend's having dinner. It's a Valentine's dinner, and Paul gives the most romantic speech saying that it turned out, to, like, they started as friends, but they were having dinner, and he realized it turned out to be Julia all along. She does this sweet thing where she puts her hand behind her little paper heart there and makes it beat. She gets tears in her eyes, and I may or may not have done the same thing. He says, you're the bread to my butter and the breath to my life. I love you, darling girl. Oh, you guys. So cute. Okay. This is going to be where I leave off of part two. Guys, I love this so much. I love this behind the scenes information. I love this movie. I love talking about it. So I hope you're enjoying it too. Do leave me comments. I read them all. I love them. I love hearing everything you guys think and what you have to say and your other recommendations. I love those too. So Leave me all that. Let me know if you've seen the movie, if you like the movie, if you're familiar with Julia Child and, and just all of it. What are your thoughts on Amy Adams? That sort of thing. Let me know in the comments. If you like what I'm doing here, consider joining Patreon. We're doing deep dives on the original Sex in the City series. We're going episode by episode, having so much fun on that. Also on one of the levels, I'm doing Always Sunny because you know I love Always Sunny. So check that out. Uh, if you're not looking for a commitment, I get that too. Do consider checking out that coffee site. It's ko-fi backslash Real Housewives Recaps. You can give a one-time donation. Again, I'm really trying to save up toward this sound system. I really think that it would go a long way and help my videos, and I'm very excited about that. So thank you to all who have given over there. And yeah, just keep hitting that sub, thumbs up, Tell your friends about me. Like all that stuff helps me out. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I can't wait to keep going with part two of Julie and Julia. Take care. Bye-bye.